performance has been a major concern for me. And uh, so I've spoken widely on media trials. Uh, of course, to no effect, because the moment a person is a public figure, in India, there are no holds barred, and the press tries to report them. I think one of the thing, uh, aspects that we as lawyers can do is that if it's about a case that we are doing, and I'm saying there will be exceptions. There can't be, it can't be a rule. But if it's a matter that you are doing, then one should try and not be opining all the time about it because then you are adding to the same media trial. It's extremely unfair for pre-trying the person because our judges are human. In fact, there's been a great, great debate on this. Are judges human enough that they will get affected by media or are they in ivory chambers where um, media reporting will not affect them. And um, I say, for example, in that Indrani's case, you know, that case where her daughter has disappeared and she's being tried. I'm not involved with the case, so I can speak about it very easily. So Indrani Mukherjee and Peter Mukherjee's case, it became such a media trial. Uh, and uh, to some extent, there were people who were crying for his blood, even though it wasn't clear that he was involved. Whatever may be the gory facts of any case, one has to have some restraint and media has to learn to self-restraint. But since one newspaper or one, uh, you know, uh, one channel may be reporting. The other channel doesn't want to be left behind because this is juicy news. It's newsworthy. It will get to TRPs and so on. So everybody starts reporting more and more facts. Um, or even in that uh, case of that Arushi murder case, you know, the facts are that media so much takes over a case that the actual trial and the judges get complete, can get completely confused and scared to do what is their job to do. Of course, they can get scared even if they have somebody under the Gunda Act, Gangster Act, and they may say, okay, let me, you know, should I be giving bail when this person has so many cases or should I not be giving bail and would my life be in danger? I mean, a judge is a human being. He need, but there have to be norms and Supreme Court has laid down the norms. Many cases, there's PUCL versus State of Maharashtra in Nirbhay's case, with that um, India's daughter that uh, there was a movie and the court said let it not be released in the trial until everything is over. That was Justice Badar Ahmed's, I think Justice Sanjeev Deva's bench. So there have been repeated pronouncements by Supreme Court. Then the other issue is gag orders. The moment there's a gag order, the Lawyers are up in arms, the press is up in arms, this person's got a gag order. How can they be stopping freedom of speech and expression? And in the and now with social media, it's so strong that the US, which believed that freedom of speech and expression should not be curtailed at all after I think O.J. Simpson trial and that there was another famous trial, I'm forgetting the name, uh, where a lady was accused of murdering her child and then 
later acquitted, although she was acquitted. Fact is, it became totally a media trial that the U.S. is thinking of bringing in parameters for the press. So uh, the United Kingdom has been more circumscript, uh, mostly saying the moment a matter is sub judice, then the reporting should be just actual reporting rather than juicy this side, that side, right, wrong report. India, we've not had these parameters. The courts have said it uh, a couple of times, but nobody's really gagged, said, you know, anything to the press, you cannot do this. So I think it's time our press did some self-restraint. Otherwise, we'll be sending some innocent people to the gallows. And I think that's really very scary. Thank you.